Let's bring in Senate Minority Whip Republican John Thune of South Dakota. Senator, good to have you with us today. Uh, that, that's an extraordinary story. I mean, that, that's the kind of thing that's happening down there. It is. It's a humanitarian crisis. It's also a national security crisis, obviously. But what they're talking about is absolute insanity. I mean, think about this. If they get rid of Title 42, it's been it's kept about 50 percent of the people who are trying to come here illegally from getting into the country illegally. Add another 50 percent to the number of people who've come here illegally just in the last year. And we're at about 150,000 now a month attempted illegal crossings. And getting rid of Title 42 is just going to exacerbate that situation. If you don't have to believe us, the two Democrat senators from Arizona have been pleading with the Department of Homeland Security and with the Biden administration, don't do this. This is going to be, this is going to be an absolute disaster on our border. And they have no plan in place to deal with it, but they're talking about doing it anyway. I mean, it is absolutely stunning to me that they would move forward with this, especially at a time when they're asking for additional COVID relief. So they're basically acknowledging that we still have a pandemic when it yeah. comes to trying to get funding, but they're saying the pandemic's over in terms of immigration. It's yeah, crazy. That, that, that's exactly right. So we're at a moment where you still have Dr. Fauci saying that restrictions might be coming, and yet they're considering lifting Title 42, which I would just remind everybody was put in place under President Trump, and it basically said that you could turn people back at the border because of the pandemic situation in the country, and now they're discussing lifting it. Here's JJ Johnson, uh, head of DHS under President Obama. Here's what he says about this. Just for perspective, we're about to hit one million in six months. Uh, my highest year was 468,000 in the entire year. These are very, very large numbers. They're, they're unsustainable in my view. Unsustainable in, in his view. Um, I, I mean, you just have to wonder, the, the, what the message is here, if it's unsustainable and you've got the border people saying it's unsustainable, what is the administration going to do to create a situation that's tenable? Right. And they, they would have to have at least, Martha, even if they're, I mean, it's going to overwhelm Border Patrol. Let's face it. I mean, people down there, this, this is going to be a, a horrible situation for them to try and manage. But there's no plan in place even to bring in like FEMA or, or some entity that could help just uh, manage the flow and deal with all the disruption and all the, the crises that are going to be created at the southern border. This is, this is a disaster in the making. It's a slow moving disaster. And it's one that's totally preventable if the, the administration would simply adopt different policies. And honestly, I don't think they, it doesn't seem like they care because the president hasn't been there. His so-called uh, border czar, Vice President Harris, hasn't been to the border. This seems to be a non-issue to them. And, and it's gonna, it is going to overwhelm our southern borders, which is why even Democrats in the Senate are now urging and pleading with the, the president and the administration yeah. to take a different course. You know, it, it, it seems like they just love to turn a blind eye to this issue. And as you point out, um, Kristen Sinema and Mark Kelly, the senators in Arizona, know better. They know that they can't do that. I know, uh, just to switch gears uh, for this last question, if I may, Senator, you were at the closed-door briefing on the war in Ukraine yesterday, and I spoke to General Keene yesterday, and he said, I hate to say this, but I get the feeling that the administration does not want to necessarily see Putin lose in this situation, that perhaps they're okay with some sort of stalemate, some sort of deal here, and that they, in fact, have been pushing for a deal pushing Zelensky for a deal. Is there anything you can share with us, big picture? Well, um, yeah, you're right. It was a classified session. Yeah. But I don't, my, my impression is, Martha, and this is just, again, based on having sat in some of those sessions and, and observed and listened and all the reporting that's being done on this, is that yeah, I, I think the administration would like to strike some sort of a deal here. But I think the deal has to be, the terms of that deal have to be set by the Ukrainian people. They're the ones whose lives have been destroyed by this. And I don't think the United States ought to be putting any pressure on President Zelensky or the Ukrainians to, to enter into a deal that's a bad deal for them. And on, honestly, the best thing that can happen here is for the Russians to be crushed. I mean, if, for Putin to be completely stopped and defeated. And that's what we ought to be trying to achieve here is victory, uh, not something that enables them to continue to hang around in Ukraine uh, in some status that to, yet to be determined. And so I think we need to trust the Ukrainians on this. I think that Zelensky understands who he's dealing with. He is not in any way, um, I think, uh, you know, there's no, no, let's just put it this way. I don't think President Putin, Putin is uh, convincing President Zelensky that there's a good solution here, uh, less than absolute victory for Ukraine. Thank you very much, Senator. Good to have you here today. Thanks, Senator Martha. John Thune from South Dakota. We'll see you soon. Thank you, sir.